Hey everyone, what's going on? Thanks so much for stopping by for another video. To create a great panorama shot with the drone, we have quite often to deal with some perspective issues due to the wide-angle lens the drone uses. Sometimes the distortion is uh, very easy to address, but on many occasions the perspective correction is tricky and difficult to get correct just using the basic transform tools in Lightroom. In today's video, we're going to talk about drone photography and uh, specifically, I want to show you how to create a perfect vertical panorama stitching a sequence of shots in Lightroom and then correcting the resulting image uh, using an extremely powerful tool in Photoshop that you might not know. Let's get started. Okay, here we have a sequence of shots I captured with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro in Dolomites last October during one of my workshops. Uh, for horizontal images, we want to stitch together in order to get a full vertical view of the wonderful Trecimi della Varela. Unless you fly your drone very high, it's quite difficult, uh, if not impossible, to frame uh, with just one single shot such a, a huge view like this. So that's why panorama stitching is the best option in most cases. Uh, and it's also essential to comply with the fly altitude limits that apply in many areas of the world. Okay, let's stitch these images together using a handy panorama merge function in Lightroom. Uh, we don't need to make uh, any adjustments before stitching images uh, since the merge program is going to be a DNG file and we can edit it once the merging process is completed. Okay, uh, in order to create a panorama we need to select uh, all the images we want to stitch. So I'm going to click on the first image of the series and I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on the last image to select them all. Then we need to go to the top bar menu, select photo, photo merge and hit panorama. Or uh, uh, we can use the handy keyboard shortcut uh, once we select all the images, uh, the shortcut uh, control M and that's it. Here we are in uh, the panorama merge preview window where Lightroom provides some settings to define the merge process. Uh, if you are not familiar with the uh, panorama merge in Lightroom, uh, we have got three different projections to choose from uh, the spherical, cylindrical and the perspective projection and a bunch of other settings like the boundary warp, uh, uh, the fill edges, uh, the crop tool and a few others. That being said, the spherical projection is selected by default uh, as the first choice and uh, as you can see it doesn't work uh, uh, at all. This is a great opportunity to try using the boundary warp slider which helps to uh, fix and uh, reshape the edges uh, of the stitcher panorama to fill uh, these uh, blank areas. The result is definitely not exciting and uh, as an alternative we could use uh, the fill edges uh, switch uh, uh, to let Lightroom fill uh, the blank areas rebuilding from scratch using the original image content. But again, the result is terrible. Okay, let's try with the cylindrical projection uh, if we can get something more uh, decent. <laughs> okay, it doesn't work. Uh, the third one, the last one, uh, the perspective uh, projection Okay, uh, with this one we do have a better starting point. Generally, from my experience, I found that uh, this projection works pretty well for the majority of my vertical panels, but uh, not as good uh, um, with the regular horizontal panorama. If we take a deeper look at the image, we can see that the top part with the peaks, uh, it's quite good, uh, the proportion are fine, but as we move towards uh, the lower half of the frame, uh, this area looks uh, too stretched and uh, unnatural. Now, what we want to do is to increase the value of the boundary warp to see the effect uh, of the correction. Mm. Mm. The adjustment improves uh, the overall distortion uh, uh, on the, let's say, the foreground here. But the mid-ground and the peaks uh, uh, now look squeezed. Can you see it? The global proportion uh, to me are still uh, quite off. So I think we can't get anything better than this uh, with just using this basic controller in uh, Lightroom. That's why uh, now we need to move uh, into Photoshop uh, and uh, to take the shot to the next level. Okay. Before opening the image in Photoshop, I'm gonna hit uh, Merge to merge the four images into a single DNG file. 
Okay, this is our final panel image, uh, and uh, from now on, uh, our goal is to correct the global perspective of this panoramic image, uh, rebalancing the proportion of the peaks uh, with the mid-ground and the foreground. To export a panorama to Photoshop, we have got uh, a couple of options. Uh, the first one is selecting uh, on the top bar menu, uh, Photo, Edit in, Edit in Adobe Photoshop, or we can select Open as a smart object in Photoshop uh, if we want to take advantage uh, of the super handy smart object function. If you are new to smart objects, uh, um, to quickly summarize how it works, uh, it's an amazing option to make uh, non-destructive adjustments to the image uh, where any edits uh, that you apply to a smart object can be undone and revisited. So, like in this case, uh, this option gives us a huge benefit when we want to perform uh, non-destructive uh, transform warps uh, of the panel shot. We can go back and forth as many times as we want uh, without uh, degrading uh, the original image content. Any filter you will apply on a smart object is going to be a sort of uh, smart filter. Okay, let's open as a smart object. Uh, that's uh, the best choice. Here we are in Photoshop. We just imported our image uh, and uh, we have a new layer here as a smart object and you can recognize it by this uh, tiny little icon on the thumbnail. Before moving forward, I'm going to duplicate this base layer uh, to create a copy of it uh, and make a comparison before and after uh, at the end of the process. So to do that, I'm going to right click uh, over the layer and I'm going to select new smart object via copy. Now I'm going to rename uh, this one as base and uh, this one as warp like that. Sweet. Now, let's change the global perspective of this uh, vertical panorama. Uh, we are going to use uh, a really powerful uh, tool, uh, and it's called a uh, Perspective Warp tool that we can find by selecting Edit and uh, Perspective Warp. As you can see, the cursor icon is changed into a tiny little cross and being in the, the layout mode up here. By just clicking and dragging, we can create uh, a grid that covers uh, the area we want to modify. In this case, uh, we want to frame the main subject we need to uh, change, so the pixel. Okay, um, since we can draw as many grids uh, uh, as we want, uh, the idea is to create uh, multiple grids uh, over some specific areas we need to warp uh, independently in order to have uh, much more flexibility on localizing the adjustments and less unwanted weird earth effects. The process is very straightforward. Just need to click and drag uh, to the point uh, you want. Uh, then line, uh, the line turns blue. And we're going to let go and the dots will automatically snap together. So that means these uh, um, two grids are now connected together. And from here we are going to create a whole series uh, of grids to cover the entire frame. There are no rules uh, on how many grids are needed. It depends on the image, uh, but make sure that every dot uh, is uh, uh, perfectly connected like this, okay? Uh, that's uh, to avoid uh, any weird artifacts uh, while you are um, warping the image. So now we are done uh, creating the entire layout. We're going to select the warp mode up here, where we can start moving uh, the dots around to reshape the images perspective, as you can see. Nice. If you hold down the Shift key and uh, click, each line turns uh, yellow, and uh, it, uh, it makes uh, it straight. Okay, like this. It works either for the horizontal uh, and, uh, and the vertical lines, uh, and it's very helpful to minimize how much uh, it's getting distorted. Okay, uh, to deselect, uh, you just need to re-click Shift and click over again. So I'm gonna drag, uh, so I'm gonna start to uh, reshape uh, the, the panorama. I'm gonna um, select this dot and start to drag down to give these uh, peaks uh, much more height. 
Okay, it's much better. If you don't want to, can you see here? It's a little bit unbalanced how it works. So we might want to add another horizontal yellow line to keep straight. Here we go. I think we are fine here. Disable it and disable this one. I'm going to activate this one and I'm going to drag down also this part of uh, the foreground. Maybe also this one. Here we go. Deselect, shift, click to deselect. I'm going to select this one. Let's have a look. Okay, so I can stretch the left part of the image. I can do the same thing here. <clears throat> okay, and um, as you can see, I'm Usually I create a, a blank colored um, layer under the main warping uh, la warp layer so I can check if there are any uh, blank areas uh, to to fill, okay? So it's, it works like a sort of checker. Here we go, I can grab this one and here we go. Okay, so simple process, quite creative, I would say. Um, actually, you can go wild with this tool, but keep in mind that uh, this, uh, uh, in this context, our goal is uh, to give the image a very natural look, uh, nothing too crazy. Once uh, we finished, uh, um, we are gonna hit this uh, icon up here to confirm the adjustment. Nice, this is our final warping result. I'm gonna hide the red layer and uh, let's uh, take a look at the before and after, before and after. If you want to refine a warping, it's pretty simple. Just uh, reveal the smart object filter, uh, just double click a perspective warp uh, here on the layer and you would be right back into the tool and uh, continue making changes without any image degradation. Maybe we can reduce uh, how these peaks are stretched. Maybe here. Okay. Done. And I'm gonna confirm. Great, that's the before and after, before and after. That's the huge difference between using uh, smart objects rather than working on a regular rasterized layer. Uh, in my opinion, we dramatically improved uh, the relationship between the peaks uh, and the rest of the image, uh, improving their prominence, uh, and the panorama looks uh, very realistic and much more true to the original scene. I think this tool is quite convenient, uh, intuitive, uh, and extremely powerful. Uh, in uh, just a bunch of minutes, uh, we took the shot from uh, here to here and that's a pretty neat result for other post-processing editing tutorials i have a dedicated playlist here on my channel so check it out guys thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed the video hit it with a like don't forget to subscribe if you have any questions please drop me a comment down below and uh, see you in the next video ciao